Bank of America is Warren Buffett's favorite bank stock. Is it a smart buy right now? Welcome to Global Value. In this video, we're going to dive deep into a fundamental analysis of Bank of America stock, ticker symbol BAC. Using methods from Warren Buffett, one of the world's greatest investors, we'll study the key numbers that Buffett values most. Then we'll figure out a price for Bank of America to really understand what it's worth in today's market. Stay with me till the end because our final fair value and rating might just surprise you. And there's more. I'll also share not one but two special bonuses that could be the deciding factors when adding Bank of America stock to your portfolio. So is Bank of America a great chance to make money? Let's find out together. Since March of 2023, Bank of America stock is up 7.3%. Compared to the S&P 500, this underperforms with it up 28% over this time. In the last handful of years since 2019, Bank of America stock is only up 24%, while the market is up 86%. While it doesn't include dividends, Bank of America trails the market. Now, when comparing Bank of America to its competitors, Wells Fargo, JP Morgan Chase, and Citigroup, we can see that the entire sector has lagged the S&P 500. JP Morgan Chase is the best performer, increasing 84% in the last five years. Bank of America comes in next, followed by Wells Fargo, which has only gone up 14.7%. Citigroup's been the worst performer, with its stock down 7.5% in this time. Interestingly, over this period, Warren Buffett has bought more Bank of America and Citigroup stock, selling out completely of Wells Fargo and J.P. Morgan Chase. Today, Bank of America is a $279 billion company that trades at 11.5 times earnings with a 2.71% dividend yield. Bank of America trades at its 52-week high. This is still down from its recent peak back in 2022, yet that is still down from its all-time high which it reached prior to the global financial crisis. In the past year, Bank of America stock is up $11. Bank of America is one of the largest financial institutions in the United States, with more than $2.5 trillion in assets. It's organized into four major segments, consumer banking, global wealth and investment management, global banking, and global markets. Bank of America's consumer-facing lines of business include its network of branches and deposit gathering operations, retail lending products, credit and debit cards, and small business services. The company's Merrill Lynch operations provide brokerage and wealth management services, as does its private bank. Wholesale lines of business include investment banking, corporate and commercial real estate lending, and capital market operations. Bank of America has operations in several countries, but it's primarily U.S. focused. That's a big difference from its peers. The company was founded in 1784 and is headquartered in Charlotte, North Carolina. Bank of America is owned by 14 different super investors, with the late great Charlie Munger, Warren Buffett's business partner, having the biggest percentage of his daily journal portfolio in the company. Other well-known super investors, including Lee Lu, the Chinese Warren Buffett, Guy Spear, and Warren Buffett himself, have over 10% positions in the business. Bank of America is Warren Buffett's second largest position, at 10% of his portfolio. Today, he owns nearly 13% of the business. Buffett's investment in Bank of America is unique. He famously had the idea while he was taking a bubble bath, first buying preferred shares of the company, which were then converted in 2017 into its common shares. Since then, he's bought more Bank of America stock in a few different quarters. The company has come a long way since the global financial crisis, with Buffett publicly praising its CEO, Brian Moynihan. In fact, Moynihan was the person who brought Warren Buffett the deal for Occidental to acquire Anadarko Petroleum back in 2019. Also curious to see, Buffett had a small position in the company prior to the global financial crisis, which subsequently went downhill and was a big Now loser. with this understanding, let's dive deep into the numbers that Warren Buffett cares about. We're using the 10 Towers Bank Analysis, this step-by-step -step checklist style approach reverse engineers how Warren Buffett would look at a company's numbers. It gives you one of the best shots of finding undervalued high quality bank stocks that can beat the market and make you a lot of money in the process. First, we want Bank of America's average PE ratio to be below the industry's average of 12 and a half times. Their PE swung pretty dramatically considering the market crash in spring of 2020. Most of the time, however, it's been around the 10% mark, but recently, in October of 2023, this hit as low as 7 times earnings. Since then, their stock has rebounded, and today, Bank of America trades at exactly 11.5 times earnings. This comes in slightly below Bank's historical average. It's a check on tower number 1. Next, we want their average return on equity to be above 9%. 
This can help us figure out if Bank of America will outperform in the long run. While this did dip to under 7% in 2020, in the rest of these years, it's been pretty stable and it's been above average. Though it is on a downtrend since it's rebounded in 2021, that's something you want to watch out for. Still, Bank of America averages 9.7% return on equity in the last five years. It's another check. Tower number three, we want sales growth, and Bank of America has grown their sales or their revenues over this time. In fact, 2023 was the company's sales high for revenue. This came in at $94 billion, which is up 10.5% from $85 billion in 2019. It's another check. In our fourth tower, we're looking for net income growth. Ultimately, a bank is valued on its net incomes or its earnings. Bank of America's earnings have bounced around a little bit over this time, given a fluctuation during COVID. They dropped in 2020, then rebounded sharply in 2021. Like their returns on equity since 2021, their earnings have slightly been trending downwards. The company's earnings are down 4% from where they were at in 2019. This means it's our first X of the day on tower number four. Something to put in the bank for later in our analysis is what they bring in in an average year over this time. Bank of America is amongst the most profitable earners of any American corporation, bringing in $26.3 billion in an average year. Again, put that in the bank for later as we'll come back to it in our final tower. Tower number five, we want growth in their deposits. Generally, we want stable and steady growth in a bank's deposits unless they're fueled by some sort of acquisition. Very fast deposit growth was what got a number of banks into trouble in 2023, and it was in part responsible for the failures of First Republic and Silicon Valley Bank. Bank of America did have some more troubling signs, especially with how fast their deposits grew and how they used these deposits, but given structural factors and management's work since then, it may not be as much of a concern. Their deposits did grow sharply by 34% in the last five years alone with the tons of this growth coming in 2019 and 2020. Since then, their deposits are up and down somewhat, but they're still relatively steady. It's another check on our fifth tower. So far, we have four checks and only one X. What will the second half of our analysis look like? Next in tower number six, we want their shares outstanding to be decreasing. A well-run bank is going to have excess capital that it needs to either reinvest, make acquisitions with, or return to shareholders. In the case of Bank of America, they've been aggressively returning capital to shareholders. Share buybacks are one of their ways of doing this. Since 2019, the company's repurchased 14.5% of their shares outstanding, bringing their total shares to $8 million today. This is one of the major reasons Warren Buffett's held on so tightly to the company, both that he approached them and that they're growing his ownership in the business without him spending any money. This is another check on tower number six. In tower number seven, we want their interest on deposits as a percentage of their total deposits to be decreasing. Right off the bat, because of the increase in interest rates in the last couple of years, this tower is going to be an X, but that's not the most concerning sign. Bank of America paid 1.6% interest on total deposits in 2019, and this jumped to 3.8% in 2023. What really matters as a bank is how this stacks up compared to their competitors. Banks are commodity businesses, with money more or less being the ultimate commodity. By having low interest costs on deposits, banks can potentially get a low-cost producer advantage. You'd want to compare Bank of America to some of its peers in this category to get a better sense on tower number 7. In tower number 8, we want their non-interest expenses as a percentage of total deposits to be decreasing. Instead of being subject to interest rate changes, non-interest expenses have to do with the cost structures at the bank. What we're looking at here is a more conservative way of calculating a bank's efficiency ratio, which usually looks at their non-interest expenses as a percentage of total revenues or sales. Deposits matter more for a bank and are less subject to the macro economy, which is one of the reasons this is more conservative here. Bank of America is becoming a more efficient operator, decreasing these non-interest expenses from 3.7% of total deposits in 2019 to 3.4% today. While that's a small increase and it's a check on metric number eight, given the size of this bank, that equates to a large amount of dollars into shareholders' pockets. With efforts like digital transformation and banking and reducing the number of banking branches, this could be a continuing trend for Bank of America. Tower number nine is one of two key bank safety metrics that we're going to look at. 
we want their institutional deposits as a percentage of their total deposits to be decreasing and ideally as close to zero as possible. In 2019, 3.7% of their total deposits were from other institutions. This is a safety measure because it's easier for institutional deposits to leave than it is for retail deposits. Very high institutional deposits may also increase the bank's level of systemic risk. Bank of America has likely done a good job by bringing these to zero today, and it's what we want to see. This is a check on tower number nine. Before we get to our 10th tower, why don't we check in on our first bonus? Right now, Bank of America pays a 2.71% dividend yield. As our bonus, we want their dividends to be supported by their earnings. That's what really matters for a bank. Not only has Bank of America grown their dividends per share payments in each of the last five years, they have grown their earnings on average over this time. The company's dividend payout ratio has grown, but it's still in a relatively safe range. This is exactly what we want to see, and it's a huge check on our first bonus. Bank of America supports their dividends, and these may continue to grow into the future. That's even more money in the pockets of shareholders. The big tower of them all, tower number 10, we want the company's market cap, which today comes in at $278.6 billion, to be below their average five-year earnings multiplied by 10. This helps to give us a starting point for their valuations based on some historical numbers in the banking sector. We learned way back in metric number four that Bank of America brings in $26.3 billion in an average year over this time. When that's multiplied by 10, it comes out to $263 billion in total earnings. Unfortunately, that's $15 billion below today's market cap, which means it looks like Bank of America is slightly overvalued. This is an X on tower number 10. Stay till the end of the video to figure out Bank of America's possible fair value per share. But first, it's time for our second bonus. Our second bonus is our second big safety metric for a bank. It's one of the ways you could have spotted the bank failures in 2023 ahead of time. Instead of losing money as a shareholder in Silicon Valley or First Republic Bank, you could have slept soundly. Here we want Bank of America's 10-year median returns on equity to be above their 10-year compounded annual growth rate in their assets. Assets growing faster than returns is perhaps one of the main things you want to avoid in investing, as it can signal that the company is less efficient using their capital. Fortunately for Bank of America shareholders, this is the case, as their median 10-year returns on equity come in at 8.1%, while the company's asset growth has a CAGR of 4.3%. In a business like banking with an inverted balance sheet, it's a huge warning sign if assets are growing faster than their returns. Today, Guru Focus gives Bank of America a fair value of $39 per share, meaning it's around 9% undervalued. Other valuations come in on either side of that value. Bank of America has a median price to sales value of $36 per share and a gram number of $41 per share. We'll put these all together to get a fair value for Bank of America in just a moment. But first, what are the business qualities that really attracted Warren Buffett to Bank of America, and why is it his favorite bank? Let's start with the long thesis first. Number one, Bank of America is poised to succeed on a nationwide scale and there seems to be no structural reason why it can't be one of the strongest bank franchises going forward. Number two, as a GSIB, Bank of America should not have to worry about deposit flight, and its valuation has become less demanding recently, potentially increasing future upside. Number three, Bank of America is seeing exceptional digital adoption, and there still seems to be something left in the tank for expense savings. This potentially helps the bank better absorb inflationary expense pressure. But it's not all positives. Let's look at a short thesis as well. Number one, if the economy ever falters and rates are cut, watch out for the downside. Bank of America is hamstrung with a longer duration securities portfolio, which will take years to mature away. That was the major problem to a higher degree in these recent bank failures. Number two, the easy expense cuts for Bank of America are probably over. And with expenses starting to creep up again, it may be difficult for the bank to fight back. Number three, there are potentially few positive catalysts left for the banks. Funding costs are running higher, net interest income has probably peaked, higher regulatory scrutiny is likely, and a potential recession may be around the corner. Now let's put these qualities together with our price estimates to figure out a fair value for Bank of America and give our rating. So far in our fundamental stock analysis of Bank of America, ticker symbol BAC, we learned the company goes 7 for 10 on our 10 Towers Bank Analysis. 
Bank of America checks the box on both of our metrics. They look good on our safety metrics, and they're returning a lot of capital to shareholders, even if their earnings are slightly down in the most recent year. There are both positives and negatives that come from its huge size and scale. Ultimately, Bank of America is still Warren Buffett's favorite bank, and it's one of his biggest positions. Today, it has a street target price of $37.60 per share, but our global value fair value comes in at just $33.41 per share. That's pretty close, so it looks like Bank of America is around fairly valued. Interested in Bank of America and finding more undervalued stocks? Check out the description to get free access for 7 days to our exclusive investing tools. Share your thoughts in the comments and check out this next video.